Around this time last year, I took famous kids TV characters and turned them into fantasy beasts, and I really wanted to try something like that again, but exploring it through a different one of the series that I regularly do on here. Hence today, taking characters from things like Sesame Street and Winnie the Pooh, and turning them into SCPs. Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show! Before I begin with today's lecture, I would like to inform you all that I have put in an official request for us to cease using arbitrary subcategories for SCPs, such as SCP-P, SCP-D, and so on, as I feel that we will promptly be running out of alphabetical options, and the distinctions between these groups often seem rather non-existent. With that said, today I've been asked to educate you all on SCPs that fall into the already existing subcategory of SCP-K. How do these differ from SCP-P entities, or even regular classification SCPs? Your guess is as good as mine. Anyhow, we will start today with item number SCP-K405. Object class, safe. Special Containment Procedures K405 is to be housed in a standard containment cell. It is to be fed one can of malt extract every second day, and a steak once every two weeks. Personnel are only to enter containment while wearing a full protection bite suit to protect themselves from the entity's teeth. Description SCP-K405 is a three-foot-tall bipedal tiger, it was found in Ashdown Forest in Sussex, England, along with a handful of other entities that similarly resemble real-world animals, but have odd distinctions in anatomy and biology. Upon taking blood, tissue samples, and x-rays, it was discovered that K405's muscles are constructed from a substance that is near identical in molecular structure to rubber. Additionally, the lengthy tail that sprouts from its bottom appears to be made up of a spiraling bone that acts near identically to a spring. Instead of walking, it will often bounce around on its tail as though it were a child's pogo stick. Other creatures found in close proximity to this one included kangaroos and a rabbit, both more traditionally associated with leaping and bouncing, and yet this tiger-like creature is far more agile, and in full spring of its tail, has proven able to leap 22 feet into the air. When initially discovered, this creature was mischievous and overly energetic. It also seemed able to process what the field operatives were saying to it, but lacked intelligence in many other regards. When our ops began capturing the entities of this woods, K405 climbed to the top of a tree and was then unable to get itself back down. Its abundance of energy has not changed since being brought into containment, but now the entity has become more irritable and hostile. I have proposed it be transferred to an area such as the Ruby Sector biome, where it can roam freely in a somewhat natural setting, but the request is still pending. We have found that it can be entertained for a significant amount of time by being given items such as a balloon or other childlike distractions, but eventually it will get bored of these and once more become irritated by the confines of its cell. Even if it had not began acting more erratically, however, I for one am glad that we have found no evidence of other entities of this creature's same species, as they are both too anomalous to be allowed to remain out in the wild, and yet not dangerous enough to justify utilizing abundant Foundation resources in containing more of them. Luckily, it does seem that K405 is indeed the only one. The next entity we will discuss is another that was found in close proximity to other anomalous creatures though in this case, these were found in the depths of the Pacific Ocean. Item number SCP-K704. Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. K704 is contained in a two-tiered cell with an elevated platform covered in sand and a lower level submerged in water. Its cell is to contain within it $3,000 worth of American currency made up of $1 bills, and personnel are permitted to provide it with more currency when it follows orders directly or acts in an otherwise exceptionally cooperative way. 
It is also to be fed a diet of predominantly plankton and chum. Description K704 is a quadrupedal crab entity that stands at roughly 4 feet tall. It has a largely red shell with a blue segment on its torso and a set of green eyes on stalks stemming from the upper front of its head. It is also clad in a pair of four-legged pants and it is currently recorded in our documents that it was found wearing these pants. But, given it was brought into custody by a team that included Dr. Jack Bright, whose unprofessional attitude does not evoke a sense of trust, I am skeptical to believe this so-called fact. I believe Dr. Bright provided this entity with a pair of pants as some ill-conceived attempt at humor. Anyhow, this creature was found in the waters near the Pekini Atoll in the Marshall Islands. This region was once subjected to regular nuclear tests, which could explain the emergence of unusual sea life. Between 1946 and 1958, the US government detonated 67 nuclear weapons on these islands. The human natives of this region were forced to leave due to the radiation now rampant in the region, but this seems to have no negative effects on K704 or the other entities found in close proximity to it. Other than its anomalous biology, the strangest thing about this entity seems to be its obsession with money. During its first week on site, the entity assaulted a doctor who entered its containment, and in their flight they dropped their wallet. The entity was then seen pulling all the dollar bills out of the wallet and hoarding them in the corner of its cell. Curious to see if the creature could be reasoned with to be more cooperative, that same doctor attempted to train K704 like a dog, holding more money before it, but making requests such as sit or lie down for the entity to follow in order to receive the money. The entity showed a high degree of understanding and was quickly doing whatever the doctor asked, so long as it was then given money for doing so. Of course, Dr. Bright got further involved upon hearing the strange quirk of this entity, and so these trials were taken further and further until they even placed K704 into a controlled setting with a sperm whale and instructed the entity to treat the whale as if the creature was its own daughter. I am still not certain what Dr. Bright expected that to look like, but the entity did thereafter show great affection for the whale and made efforts to protect it when a field operative dove into the water carrying a harpoon. He is now apparently attempting to teach the entity how to prepare food, and with the assurance of monetary compensation, K704 is proving incredibly proficient at making hamburgers, and has even managed to make what Dr. Bright calls one of the best food items he has ever consumed. Though again, we are taking some of this on Dr. Bright's word, which means very little. The next entity is a breath of fresh air in terms of SCPs we contain, as thus far it has proven to be purely benevolent and exclusively makes the site it is contained within a better place. Item number SCP-K201. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. K201 is allowed to roam freely about Site 88, where it is currently held. It has a containment cell where it sleeps, adorned with swamp-like foliage to help keep the entity more comfortable. It is to be sustained on a diet of worms, flies, and other insects mixed into a salad with vinaigrette dressing. Description K201 is a two-foot-tall humanoid frog with slimy green flesh. It also has a mane of yellow hair around the base of its neck. Like the previously mentioned entities, this one seems to be entirely unique, one of a kind, though claiming to have spawned from a common family of frogs. As you may suspect from that statement, this entity has a full grasp of the English language. But on top of that, the entity is also a skilled singer and musician. It was found in the swamps near Leyland, Mississippi in the United States, and was discovered because of the pleasant melody it was playing on a banjo and singing while perched on a felled tree. When found, the entity was calmly explained to why a creature such as it could cause unease and panic if discovered by common civilian populace, and while it professed to not fully agree with the Foundation's analysis of the potential risks, 
he agreed to come into Foundation custody all the same. Upon doing so, he was provided with regular meals and even given a new banjo, as the one he'd played prior was a broken and withered one that had been left in the swamp by an inebriated musician. K201 has proven able to play a variety of songs, both original and covers, and while his voice does have an odd, warbly tone, it is also generally regarded by most employees of Site88 to be very pleasant to listen to. Other facts we have learned about this entity are that he is left-handed while playing the banjo, though has proven to be fairly ambidextrous. He also has an unusual physical attraction to pigs, and claims to have a romantic partner somewhere that is a humanoid pig creature. While the entity has never proven to lie to Foundation personnel, some consider this to be the equivalent of an embarrassed high schooler claiming to have a girlfriend that his friends would not have met as she lives in Canada. Still, we have some personnel looking further into this, as if this entity does exist, it should not only be brought into Foundation custody, but it would be a nice gesture to K201 to reunite him with his lost love. I'll admit, I wish we had more entities with similarly wholesome stories of their containment. But, if we all wanted an easy profession, we would not have taken the positions that we currently have, would we? The final entity we will discuss today is one of the original entities classified under the SCP-K subcategory when they were discovered in November of 1969, though this information does not add any clarification as to why the subcategory was made in the first place. Item number SCP-K102. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. K-102 is to be housed in a containment cell in Site-28 that is to be perpetually filled with trash and several garbage cans. The garbage inside its cell is to be cycled out with new garbage to entertain the entity and ensure it does not attempt to breach containment. Personnel who converse with this entity for a period of 15 minutes or longer are required to go through a psych evaluation afterwards to ensure they are not considering harming themselves or others as a result of the interaction. Description K-102 is a 3 foot 2 inch tall humanoid creature with matted green fur. It lives inside of a trash can and is obsessed with hoarding and consuming garbage of any variety. The entity is able to speak fluent English, but talking to this entity has detrimental effects on the mental health of the person conversing with it if the interaction goes for too long. You see, this creature has a very bleak outlook on life and the world and really everything. On top of that, while this has not yet been proven, we strongly believe that this creature has some form of psychic ability to deteriorate any positivity in those it interacts with when in the presence of another being for long enough. Even just five minutes in conversation with this entity has left both D-class personnel and high-ranking doctors alike with elevated levels of anxiety and depression. This creature was found in the late 60s, hiding in a garbage can in Manhattan, New York, near the address 123 Sesame Street. That address also proved to house a number of other anomalous entities that were then brought into containment, though K-102 proved to be the most cruel and dangerous. Along with its ability to degenerate the mental health of those it converses with, the entity has proven able to teleport when unobserved from the trash can it resides in to another one nearby, completely bypassing all Foundation security. Thankfully, the only times it has done so has been when the trash in its cell was not cycled out soon enough and it grew bored of its surroundings. As a secondary measure to keep it contained, we have placed other trash cans inside its containment as well, as it does not appear to have control over what trash can it transports itself into next, meaning if it does attempt to do this again in the future, it will likely just jump into another can within its own cell. Despite how grating conversations with this entity can be, we have managed to get some information out of it, though we have yet to verify much of it as true. 
Given its proclivity to cause depression, it may very well be lying to our personnel in order to confuse and frustrate them, but the entity does claim to be a member of a full family of others like it. Though it claims the others in its family are colored orange or purple, and that its own greenish hue came about after visiting a marshland and becoming coated in green slime and mold. I personally see this as entirely unlikely, but it has also not been worth the effort to disprove. With all that said, I will end my lecture here for today. This discussion has been recorded and will be put on record along with my previous lectures for any who wish to revisit them. Thank you, and good night. If you enjoyed this, I recommend checking out my Pokemon as SCP series, or maybe my Digimon SCPs episodes. I've got a ton of episodes of turning things into SCPs, very similar format to this episode. I'll link the whole playlist. Also, I'd love more suggestions for other kids TV characters or simple cartoony characters that you'd like to see fleshed out in a way like this, whether as SCPs or Fantasy Beasts or whatever. I love doing these kinds of videos, so give me your suggestions in the comments. Also, all the high-resolution art and inks from this episode are up on the Popcraft Studios Patreon now, where Patreon always get access to high-resolution art and inks a day before a video is released. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note, and the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote from Carl Jung, who said, You are what you do, not what you say you'll do. And I was trying to think of an elaboration for that, but I think it kind of sits on its own just fine. So I hope that's inspiring, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday. Goodbye.